When Dr. Schwarter arrived, Tennyson was in pain and his temples bathed in sweat. Helga cupped his head in the crook of her arm. Still, he bleeds. She whispered into the shadows where Schwarter stood helplessly. When Tennyson saw him, he tried feebly to sit up and in a final reflex of courtesy, stuttered through breathless lungs. I am dying. And indeed he was. For hundreds of years, doctors have stood powerless while men of advanced pelvic malignancy have drained their hearts into wretched bladders. Tennyson had been bleeding for three months. His strength was gone and not even Helga could hold him to this life. In her youth, he had been her teacher. In her prime, he had married her. And then, when he was dying, he had been nursed by her. But Schwarter did still have an offer. Sir, I will prepare for you a tincture of camphor and sulphur water. There are German doctors who have stopped such bleeding with this drift. <laughs> but pray tell me, doctor, how will this staunch the bleed where surgeons have failed? The physicians of the Austrian king have exhausted all known remedies and Treves himself will not operate. Sir, replied the doctor, this medication powers the blood's ability to clot. Those friable blood pipes that the surgeons cannot repair will be studded with plugs. Plugs like corks, corks that will stem the flow and allow you to regain your strength. <laughs> Schwarter, are these corks like champagne corks? Champagne corks that will contain this failing life? I fear your corks will pop and I'll die no matter. No, sir, I will be a corpse before your corks can be prepared. And he turned to Helga with a smile. It's been so long since we drank champagne. Let us open a bottle to celebrate the kindness of this good doctor. And they called for champagne. But was Schwarter's medicine a lame offering to a fading man? The distillate of camphor and sulphur water creates a sulfonated benzene ring that today retails as the hemostatic drug ethamsalate. A drug that stimulates thrombocytopoiesis and the release of platelets from the bone marrow. Fragile capillaries essentially have holes in them and these holes allow the leakage of blood. Ethamsalate makes these platelets stickier and promotes thromboplastin formation at the sites of capillary fragility. They plug the holes like corks, but back to the story. Schwarter replaced the cork in the half-emptied bottle and Helga, he and Tennyson slowly emptied their glasses of champagne. Tennyson then thanked Schwarter and turned to Helga with a smile of happy content. And then he passed from life to death with the characteristic simplicity that had been his trait of being. Helga and the Doctor did not move or speak for the best part of a timeless while. But as the midnight hour passed, the silence was disturbed by the sound of a large black-winged moth that had flown in through the window and started banging wildly against the lamp. The muffled sound grew maddening and distracting. Dr. Shorter seemed ruffled, but found some mutterings of consolation. But suddenly, all at once, there was a joyous explosion. The cork had popped out of the champagne bottle and foam was fizzing out after it. The moth found its way out the window and disappeared into the sultry night. Schwarter was now gone and Helga was sitting staring into her husband's face. It was peaceful, smiling, knowing. There were no human voices, no everyday sounds, she wrote. There was only beauty, peace and the grandeur of death. I think she also said that Tennyson knew what all urologists have since learnt by tragic experience. Yes, ethamsalate does plug those capillary holes and affects a hemostasis of sorts. But these plugs then do go pop and the bleeding continues while the bladder just fills with clot. <laughs>